What? Let's just do let's do a thing where we like count backwards and forwards. So I say one, you say two, and we just see how tightly we can do that. Okay. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Seven. That's eight. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the hardest game ever. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 29 of the Offsite Podcast, where we chat all things construction and technology. My name's Carlos Cavallo. And I'm Jason Lancini. Hayden, how was Melbourne? Yeah, good. Although uh I've come back with potentially, potentially unconfirmed case of of COVID and a suspect pain in my eye, which is definitely not pink eye. Uh, I'll just say that for sure. <laughs> just uh, to clarify. But it does feel like eye strain. So yeah, the basically the um the takeaway and the big learning was don't leave your house. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And probably not go to Melbourne and go to projects with two hundred engineers around you, which is probably Yeah. I think whatever it was, I can't remember. Maybe eleven teams or something in in the week was was pushing the was pushing the limits of what I can do at my age. You're probably killing the productivity of the Melbourne construction industry for a couple of weeks. Yeah, with too many side <laughs> tours or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> side tours and drinks. Too many of them. Yeah, for sure. Right. So today, Jason and I are going to chat through something um, which is quite a common that's sort good of that's that's, that we that's, have. that's pretty crucial for the podcast <laughs> yeah uh, but a conversation that we often have in the office uh, or on calls which is what is the sort of landscape of technology that our customers are using we like to stay on top of it so we understand what that sort of map looks like but it's also interesting to see sort of emerging players and trends across contractors regions um, and obviously teams so we're so going to we, chat we like through- Call it like the uh, the like what's on people's screen tests, you know, like when you're on uh, when either you or like one of the team are on a call with a customer, everyone's got the like row of bookmarks, you know. What what are the tools that live in the bookmarks bar of folks uh, on on the biggest projects? Is the like is I guess the topic, right? Yeah, and the learning there is never share your screen because Jason's doing research immediately. <laughs> Cool. But everyone so, knows. I'll be like, I'll be like, what's that logo? I've not seen that one yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's kick off with the most vanilla of categories: uh, document management. There's one massive player in the UK in particular, uh, which is Acadex. A couple of years ago, no, more than a couple of years ago now, purchased by Oracle. It's pretty heavily mandated across major schemes like Crossrail and HS2. So it probably makes sense as to why people sort of adopt it as they're told anyway, if you're going to be using all these major schemes rather than jumping between. Can I, can I interrupt? I just, this is a, I don't want to go down a total sidetrack, but you're calling it Akinex. Is it not Akinex? That feels quite American to me. It might be. It, normally, I'm, that's what I've called it. And uh, funnily enough, I happen to have a chat uh, in the last like fortnight with one of the co-founders and I'm, I'm almost certain he said Aconex. He's probably right, to be fair. Okay, you got it. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not, a, it's, yeah, he's right. I'm not 100% sure I recall which one it was, but I'm, I'm almost yeah. certain it was like, I'm not doubting whether he's right. I'm doubting whether <laughs> I remember correctly. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah it's, probability sits with me being wrong over the co-founder of Aconex. So, yeah, okay, so yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll go sorry, with that. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no worries. I guess in terms of like the other ones that we notice or see, Plan Radar, A Site, there's like a few names that seem to be fairly common across projects. I have heard that sort of Procore isn't too strong in this space. So that's like you see a lot of content and marketing and stuff around Procore, but I haven't heard any positive feedback from customers using the document management side of things. How does that compare with us? Similar, yeah, similar I think bag? Definitely when, uh, yeah, almost on every customer screen is usually a, um, a bookmark to, to Aconex. There is a, a, a decent cohort, I would say, in, Ast- in Australia that use what was TeamBinder and is now part of Innate as Innate Document. I definitely, I know of a site from the UK. I don't, I have not seen it used in, in Oz. 
And I've not seen on any of the bigger contractors the like documents feature out of like a Procore or an Autodesk or, or something used. For I just think that those things, the, the depth of functionality for, I think it's like the transmittals and tracking that and the RFIs is not quite deep enough for what, uh, for what, they, what they need. So definitely it's like AConnect, maybe a bit of like team binder slash documents. And, and that's really it, to be honest, from what I see here. Yeah, they, they are actually fairly complicated tools. It's not just like a, a file system with a lot of documents that are being up-revved. Like yeah, there is a lot more to it, to be fair. So it makes sense that these sort of uh, ultra-focused apps are winning in the space and not the big suites um, and their versions of. Cool. That's a vanilla topic. Move on. <laughs> yeah. On to something super exciting, master schedules. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> there's there's literally three key players uh, which cover almost everything um, from what I see. You've obviously got P6, widely adopted for infrastructure in the UK, widely adopted across more than infrastructure, it seems, in other countries. I know they've been pushing their, the cloud version of this. I know three major tier one contractors who in the last six to 12 months have tried and reverted back to the standard sort of P6, which is oh, um, where, where's probably- Olu and, Where's Olu on the soundboard when you, there's like, do we have a- <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I guess, I guess the worst part of that news is for people like you, who are lead managing a product and probably want to cook build awesome API connectivity. And I guess that's making it more difficult that people aren't all transitioning to the cloud versions of that tool. Yeah, I think I think definitely there's there's something that's got to happen there. I think you're right. Like it's just the the same. Well, you said three actually. What were the three? Naming the contractors. No, 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 no. The three tools you said. I thought you said there were three tools. Oh, so yeah. So that's the first. Uh, we'll come on to Asta and MSP. But I guess that background, Asta, like it's on every building project here. They tend to not use P6. I think it is easier to use. Um, it's a bit simpler. P6 has like way too much functionality, which is why it's more on the co- sort of complicated infrastructure projects. And then there's MSP, generally smaller jobs, like PMs that have more responsibility to actually own the master schedule like it because it's easier than the other two. You can sort of pick up and, and run with it. So we see a lot and of MSP. A, a lot cheaper. Yeah, substantially cheaper. Um, but yeah, sorry, back to P6, you said. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I was I was just going to say that like it seems to me that there's the, the, there doesn't seem any great exodus away from the like desktop-based versions of like P6 and, and Asta. I see. I think the the penetration of Aster in in APAC is probably well. It is definitely lower. Some building uh, contractors and projects will use it, and then maybe I would class it as like the more adventurous planners might uh, give it a go. I, I even see occasionally within like a big contractor that's like a you know a hundred percent a P six shop. They'll have like a, there'll be a couple of people using the Aster for specific projects. I can think of a couple mm. that come to mind, but yeah, uh, I, it's if you asked me this in ten years ago, it'd probably be the same answer. I don't know if you asked me in ten years. Hopefully, it's not the same answer, but I don't. There's not a lot changing there. Yeah, people are like uh, ferocious in their views on P6 versus Aster as well. It's quite an interesting, like, yeah, with planners, they really do like have their tool and they back it. And I don't know whether it's because you have to commit six years of your life to learn how to use to those tools thing. properly, and then it's... you don't want it to disappear. So you ding, back ding, it. Ding. So stuff any change, which is a, a great mindset. Yeah. So uh, next up, uh, project management. The most common seems to be the Autodesk construction c- cloud. So you're talking here. about like big, big like construction management suites, basically. Is what yeah. So that, let's define the category as like you're you're purchasing a suite, and then they're going to try and use as many apps within that suite as possible to get their money's worth. So yeah. Autodesk seems to be the most common. A number of major contractors or tier one contractors uh, are using it for sure. The hard thing is to gauge the actual depth of use. Yes, they use Autodesk, but then we see. Oracle Aconex used for document management. We see Synchro used instead of Revit for modeling. We see like other applications used for things like site diaries. So I still don't think they've ticked the like 
we are a suite, you use us and you don't need anything else box. But it seems to be doing the best out of the bunch. Yeah, it's it's same as like the document management, right? It's like if with, with those, there is seems to be a little pattern of like those big platforms, they try to cover every single base, but all the features are just a little bit like shallow. Especially if you're a big contractor and you're trying to make a business case for going to one thing. And like what's funny is everyone wants this one thing that does it. Like in the contractors, they don't want to jump between tools. But because there's not like feature parity between like a best in class document management and like the built in document management in like a Procore, it's very hard on a big organization to rally like company support to say we're going to go from it because someone wants someone in document control wants this very specific feature that is their entire workflow that they do every day and it's not over there therefore we're definitely not moving over so it's it's really interesting yeah. that like the, the specific outcome that they want because it's like so because there is a trade-off of well it doesn't have the seven thousand deep features we can't move yeah um the, the pricing point you mentioned is an interesting one i'm not actually sure how autodesk are priced but um procore who we're seeing more and more of from what i gauged it's really great for their sort of data collection apps so like gathering information from the field seems to be what they're strong at um it's unpopular for things like their model viewers and document management and estimating apparently those just are very strong aspects of the tool but considering procore charge their subscription based on a percentage of your revenue you're really in a tough spot if you're not using all the apps because you're still yeah, but it, it does. Committed. It does depend on which of the modules you're using as well. So it does. It varies. It's not just yeah. like a, it's. You don't get everything for the for the. They normally. But sell if the it person in. doing that negotiation, they might be quite unaware that certain apps just won't be adopted by the team, and they're going to purchase their own. So it's it's a difficult. Yeah, thing it's kind of like how it kind of it's like how kind of it's kind of like how we pay for Notion, and you still do your to do list in your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> nothing is a good calendar google calendars are the way forward yeah i will one if anyone day if anyone's it. seen carlos's calendar it is a it, you've never seen anything like it it's a full to-do list and note-taking app in a calendar yeah between between 7 and 9 p.m i have like 10 calendar entries and as i finish them i delete them and if i reprioritize i shift them to the day that i'm going to do them it works <laughs> but, uh, yeah. someone in like <laughs> google hq is going what is going on with this user yeah. <laughs> this guy is super productive he does 100 meetings per day yeah but he also <laughs> deletes everyone he makes <laughs> yeah 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 someone we're having a good time somewhere right yeah, yeah. um final category let's label this gis slash slash like imagery capture inclusive of like bim or no well, I'll name a few apps in a second and you can tell me what will okay. categorize them as. But okay. like, by far, the sort of um, biggest GIS tool here is ArcGIS. Um, they seem to be everywhere. They're on with major organizations like National Highways. So that suddenly gets like a third of all the spend in the UK. Uh, they're in with the likes of High Speed 2. A lot of main contractors are uh, looking to adopt in this space. I've spoken to a couple in just the last couple of months who are making that purchase decision. And a lot of it is to do with like the integrations that come with it. So that seems to be the biggest player. And then I've got sort of a few apps that came to my mind when I thought GIS imagery. You've got Sensor, you've got something that's actually popped up with a couple of customers recently, which is QGIS. Wasn't even aware of that more than two months ago. And then you mentioned Propeller quite a lot, which is more on their sort of uh, drone surveys and image capture. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, so it's, you're right. I think like ArcGIS are definitely the, the biggest uh player and then like qjs is kind of like a free or low cost a viewer version. more than anything no they've got a desktop application as well i think it's open source uh but i don't know how the hosting stuff works i've i've downloaded it at one point and played with it but yeah it's it's a open source version of parts of arcgis it's i don't think it's it's not a competitor for whole platform and then there's like the other category, which I think like Sensor and Propeller are probably playing in the same space, um, yeah. which is uh, uh, like, I think it's like an SDK for a drone survey. So like software to run in the drone scan that then can consume the imagery or point cloud and a way to visualize it. 
and run you know deltas between you know earthworks levels and stuff yeah uh, in australia propeller is very 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 prevalent um and i see it on almost it's 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 probably one of the most prevalent bookmarks i see on people's screens um on a day-to-day basis uh, and what's really cool is uh last week when we were in melbourne we spotted that a couple of the customers there uh were given access by propeller to like i think it's a beta feature where they'll publish their imagery to uh like an open standard it's called a web map tile service so you would know from the uk that um, products like Sensat, there's that issue where they you can't get access to the data through an API, so you've got to like export it, re-import it, host it in ArcGIS. So Propeller have a way to publish it to a web map tile service, which we can connect to directly. So we can now start to directly you don't integrate have to go with via ArcGIS, yeah, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, long story short, in that space, it does feel like there's. I see people running both Propeller and ArcGIS as well, so I don't really know why they're not. They feel like to a degree they're competitive, but people will Does use Propeller both. have the feature set that RGIs have in terms of like no. all the layer types and the asset data. It's it's more image capture and view image kind of thing. Yeah, you can kind of think of like uh, ArcGIS is like a whole platform built around like geography at the core and you can build apps on top of it and stuff, whereas Propeller is a specific app for a specific scenario. And not okay. that was a good explanation and- or not, but... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, another question on Propeller. Do they actually run this, like the service or the, like, do they send the guys to site who then man the drones or is it just like you no, fly I your own drones on the, the system? I think, yeah, either you fly your own or you hire someone in to come and fly it that's got the, whatever the license is, the, the CASA license or whatever it is, depending on which country. Yeah. Okay. A lot of time it's in contracts. These days. I don't know if you see the same thing there, but a lot of times in contracts from clients to run drone flights once a month or once a quarter or whatever it is. Uh, and it's yeah. priced into the contractor's bid. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, um, what, are you seeing on the, what are you seeing on the, what are you seeing on the BIM side? Just cause I was interested in, in that. Cause it does seem that that's still a bit of a like free for all. Synchro seems to be the most common. Like, um, if I go to site and a lot of teams will actually just run like one of their for the visualization so you can see how the job's built just because it's a useful way to understand the scope. I'd say more than 50% of the time it's on Synchro. But that's like 4D, yeah. but that won't be where the BIM model is. They'll, they'll have something, they'll have, that'll be just for the, they'll, they'll be the 4D component. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, uh, let's call it the viewer, the 4D viewer, mm-hmm. they, they'd use that. Um, I think Autodesk, but uh, yeah, I can't say I've yeah, dug into that too much. In here, it seems uh, a lot like there's a lot of Revisto being used. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that seems to be more of the like viewers popping up. So you've got like 3D Repo, a site which they purchased. They seem to be used yeah. by a bunch of building contractors. Um, the, the, the feedback seems to be it's just quite easy to use. And they also have a viewer in Power BI. So you can sort of put it in the hands of anyone without purchasing licenses. Um, so yeah, uh, the the negative one I got was the the pro call one, um, which is it's pretty difficult to use and people haven't really taken it up. Um, so they're, maybe they're opting to use the viewer that's on the actual system that they build the model in rather than try and view it through the yeah. pro call suite. So yeah, I had um on the, you and I have spoken before uh, and it came to mind because I was at a, a conference recently uh, when I was uh, traveling about how in the space of like construction software startups, um, they always have this like, they're like a sea of blue logos with really hard to remember names. And the names are always like two word amalgamations of like two very positive construction themed words. So I thought to maybe finish off the the chat, uh, we'd play a little game. I thought about it on my flight back the other day. And I thought if I could give you like maybe some pairs of names uh, and maybe one's a real company and one's a fake company, and you can try and decide yeah, okay. which one is. You can decide which yeah. one is the um, is the real construction software company. So whichever one's more ridiculous is the real one. Is that uh, right? I, look, I'm not. I can't say I've put that much thought into the game theory of which one of the of the, yeah. of the names. Yeah, yeah. But I've got like a couple of different combos that uh, that we can run through, and then there's yeah. four different groups. And if you get 
uh, four out of four, you get a gold star. Or no, someone will play a someone on the soundboard will play a sound. That's what happened. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Cool. So uh, first two are out build and acceler build. Acceler build is ridiculous. So that that just can't be the case. And I'm I'm going to stand by that no matter what the answer is. So I'm going to go. Okay, out well, I didn't think weapon. you'd get that one, but yeah, that's uh, that's correct. So that's uh, <laughs> cool. ten points to Gryffindor. Right. The next one is Control Pro and Procure Track. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, Control Pro, Procure Track. I'm going to say like Control Pro just sounds more made up. Sounds like something to do with gold. Uh, I'm going to go with the Procure Track as the real one. Ah, oh, bow, bow. Uh, control. Oh, no. What does Control Pro do? Uh, like earn value management, I think, from memory. Wow, like project There's controls. Of... Right. Yeah, yeah. That's right in your alley, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, next one, I'm going to like level it up a bit. We'll do a combo of three. So you have to pick it between the three. One um, or two is real. Like, is one fake or one... Do you, you know what? I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> one's fake. One's right. fake. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. First one, flow site, arrow yeah. flow, and flow former. Say the first two again. Well, I don't even remember what I've done here. Flow site and know. arrow flow. Yeah. I really hope Arrow Flow is the fake one. You're searching them. I, actually, I don't think, I think they're all real. Yeah, they're, they're all real. real. They're all oh, real. You didn't say there was trick questions. Well, there is kind of trick. So Flow Site's not a startup, a construction software startup. It's a product from a software startup. So that is probably, let's call that one the, the fake one. Uh, right. this is, uh, this is it's, prof- it's professional uh right so that's three number four last one and then we can we can wrap it up so uh we have site mate site hive and site pro i'm pretty sure the first two are real i've actually come across those so the third one's fake okay yeah you finished on a high that is true <laughs> yeah. uh right, so what's pro, that two out of four three out of four uh let's go with two out of four Wow. Because the, the third cool. one was kind of a bit of a hard one. Um, 50%. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening.